Hello friends, back out here playing on the Great Pumpkin, playing cards we like to say. Uh, ran out of shielding gas for my welder, so I was looking for a little project I might be able to knock out because it's the weekend and there's no place I can get that stuff today. So, but since I have some garage time, I figured we'd send the steering wheel to rehab because she is all cracked out. Check these things out. Lots of cracks, real bad around the center hub, and even particularly in some of the outer spokes here. Uh, we got some good, pretty good sized cracks going on there too. So I'm sure your steering wheel may look just like this, maybe worse, hopefully better. But what do you do with this thing? Throw it away? Heck no, these things are pretty cool looking steering wheels. The center cap horn button is just fantastic. Love the look of the steering wheel. I hate to throw that thing away. Now the downside is good luck finding a good used one. It's not cracked because you're going to pay as much as they probably whole car probably cost you. Those things are not cheap um, as if you even find one. So the other options are let's repair the steering wheel. But how do you do that? You might be asking yourself. Well, I use 3M body panel adhesive and absolutely love that stuff. So uh, look at what 3M had for products. They almost dropped it. The old plastic repair in a bottle, 05887. It's meant for flexible plastic components like bumpers and trim pieces, I guess. Um, but this steering wheel, it's made of plastic and partially flexible. So really hoping this is a good fix. This is a bit of an experiment, but I like to try new ideas. And of course, if it works out great for me, you can do the same to your steering wheel. I'll get you up here close so you can see what I've got going on. Uh, definitely some seriously deep cracking here in the center of the hub. Um, that's where the probably the ugliness is, uh, the worst of it. And we have some minor cracking out here and then here on the spoke, just the same. Now that's I don't feel going to be too hard or difficult to fill in on these. That's going to need some attention and some finesse. Now, this plastic, that's a, of course, there's a metal steering wheel inside this, and they mold the plastic around. This plastic, you can heat up and kind of reshape it and get it draw back towards the center. But I'm afraid that that's probably above my skill set, and I'd probably make it worse. Or the other thing that kind of pops in my head is once it cools and relaxes, is it going to want to just pull back apart anyway? So this is a pretty well set in stone 55 years of shrinkage and i think i was going to leave that well enough alone but just an fyi you could heat this up and it becomes pliable and i've seen people do that on some videos and it seems to work for them but uh i'm not going to do that i'm going to try this this year because let's see if i'm not brave enough i don't expect you guys are either so how can we do it i said we're going to try this stuff out here but i say step one this thing is just disgustingly dirty i'm going to go ahead and give it a bath maybe put it in the missus soaking tub and Use her toothbrush, but just just don't tell her. But we'll get this thing cleaned up. We'll come up with a plan to get it fixed. Bam, just like that, clean and just like new again, right? Well, got all the dirt out of here. These spokes look really nice on the inside. Now you can see the nice, pretty black plastic. It's not been sun bleached, faded, and worn out. And all the gooey gunk, body butter sludge out of the rim here. Now it is a little faded through here. That's not still crud. I've actually tried scrubbing on that, but it doesn't come off. So. It must be a stain or just maybe it's faded out some of the plastic. But here's something else kind of funny. You guys have been following along at the very beginning of this build. Remember that white paint that was all over the subframe? It appears it made itself to the steering wheel. I could not get that stuff to scrub off there. We got some pretty deep scratches too. But nonetheless, I think it's still going to be a great foundation. Scrubbing and cleaning with a little bit of soap and water. No dish soap in the, in the sink there and a scotch Bright pad. It came up pretty nice. So that's a good starting point. Now, what we're going to do, though, to prep these cracks and the surfaces, uh, I've got a burr bit um, meant for, like, uh, aluminum, so it's really wide teeth on it. I'm going to use that to taper back all the cracks, kind of like a V-groove, with the idea, in case this stuff does flex or move around a little bit, less chance of cracking right back on that super fine line. You know, similar here on the outside edge of the rim, you could try to fill in just the crack, but I'm afraid it may want to flex. And... Of course, you're back to be having a crack in your nice finish. So I'm going to V-groove all of this back. So when I put my adhesive in there, I'll give them more of a bite uh, and hold on in the place. And the same thing here with the cracks around the spokes. So I'm going to do the same thing to that. Now V-groove or V-notch that stuff out. And then hopefully that's going to hold up. So now the next thing here, I'm going to get my little burbit out. Let's get started on that. The style of burbits, there's different kinds for different type of metal. Now I know this is plastic, but basically ferrous, non-ferrous metal kind of thing. But the separation of the teeth or the cutting edges are much further apart here. So less chance of clogging it up and basically gumming up the works. So this one would probably work for plastic, but I'm not even going to try. I have this one here. I'm going to try to use this one. The idea is just to file back the plastic in kind of a V-groove here. So a place for the uh, epoxy to go into basically. But all we're going to do is something like this here. Here, take a look at that 
kind of cut that back at an angle. So if you slide it down here, this is all tapered back. So when I put my, I guess you call that epoxy on there, it'll actually be of a wider patch. Hope that it stays in place. So I'll do the same thing here to the other side of the crack. I just kind of taper it back or bevel it. Got this all v grooved out. I see a nice channel for that stuff to all sit in. And of course, I know it makes it wider. It's going to take a little more material, but just again, I think it's going to hold up better. This is 80 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to key up, scratch up, scuff, whatever you want to call it, the leading edges here. So whatever goes past my opening, I have a fighting chance of actually biting into it. And it's opening the surface up too because it's a pretty slick surface. And I would like have some kind of a bite to it. So. Now it's all said and done. The steering wheel will be a painted steering wheel, so it's not going to be as durable as the original finish, unfortunately, because this is all molded plastic, solid black. Never be an issue, so. But there isn't any other choice. So we're going to just paint it. So we're going to basically do body work on the entire steering wheel and reworking it and finishing it like you would painting a car. And the same thing with painting a car, you can't leave a slick finish or the paint or your materials won't adhere. idea here no more shiny stuff it's all scuffed up and scraped up and i guess it's not the end of the world we're going to body work this and give all the sand marks when we're done but i just i really want that thing to hold do this front edge here too okay i think that ought to work so I got some more goodies out here. Next step of the process, tack cloth, wipe it down, rubbing alcohol, get anything out of there cleaned out so it's ready for the stuff to adhere. Uh, I got a couple ideas. I might just take some masking tape, put on the inside here to kind of give it kind of a mold so it doesn't go oozing down the inside of it. And I don't know the consistency of this stuff, how runny it is. So it may take several coats to get it built up. But either way, I'll put some tape on the inside here. And what you see here, here's that adhesive. Uh, I have an actual fancy gun. They make a cheaper version of this, or if you get lucky, you need to squeeze out equals amounts. Uh, I should say that's an equal amount of different sizes, but you know what I'm trying to say. Throw it on the paper and mix it up kind of like Silly Putty or Bondo. So there's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dump some on the old uh, Cheerios box, mix it up, and fill in the groove. All right, here's the next part of the process that's popping in my head. Wipe it all clean. I use some alcohol on the towel here. Wipe it all clean. Clean the groove out really nice. Get any kind of residue, sludge, slime, whatever. Basically prep it just like you're going to do body work on a car. Now, the other thing that's kind of laying in my head here, that's a pretty wide opening. I don't know the viscosity or how thick that stuff is or isn't. I'm going to take some tape. I'm going to put it on the inside of here kind of build like a mold because that's going to be pretty thick. So it's going to be plenty of material, but I don't want it just kind of oozing out of the way. So I'm going to take some masking tape. Yeah put inside the channel there so it'll help keep it shape. And this don't has to be beautiful. And I look inside the groove and I have something for the stuff to let right again, so I'll go ahead and maybe tape the inside here too. Okay, all right, now this gives it a place for that stuff to sit in there and not hopefully fall out. So the next thing we're gonna do, I have the actual fancy mixing gun they use for this stuff. There's other versions, things a whole lot cheaper. I bought this at a swap meet years ago, like 60 bucks. So I got it for a great deal, but you get the idea. It's still like a two part mix, kind of like uh, body filler. They make a mixing tip for it, but that's nah, okay. I know how to use it without it. So we're going to go ahead and get some going here. It seems to be pretty thick, the viscosity, so it may hold its shape pretty good. Oh yeah, that's plenty thick. I don't think it's gonna get carried away here. 
since I'm not using the mixing stick. Wow, I'm gonna make sure it makes this stuff good. Pretty sure I'll be able to get some pretty good shape out of this. Definitely not as thin as body filler. Boy, okay. I still think the tape's not a bad idea. Okay, well, let's get this going here. Now what we can see, I'll pack it all in the base of the channel. Again, this may take more than one coat to get the thickness out of it. It says working time is like five minutes and it dries and oh, four hours or something silly like that, so. Now, I'm gonna get you in here a little bit closer, kind of spreading that kind of far from the camera, I realize, so it's, but this stuff really kind of takes its shape and kind of holds its shape. So I'm thinking we get it really close and then of course being plastic, you just gotta be a sculptor. So those folks out there who build cars out of Bondo, this may be your calling. There we go. That's absolutely ugly. I guess I'd rather have excess. Like I said, we'll file it back down to the right shape. But it uh, it does spread pretty nice. Not super stinky. I say body fill has a lot more odor to it than this stuff does. I think that's gonna call that good. We'll leave that well enough alone. Let that cure and see what it looks like. We let it cure for about 15 minutes here. It's actually dry to the touch. It doesn't seem to be smearing around. Like I said, it's kind of self levels a little bit. Um, it's the viscosity of like JB Weld, maybe. I don't know, but uh, let's peel the tape off. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, now, the inside looks really good. You just paint that and be done. That actually looks like it fills in really good. So. I think the tape was a good idea. That seems to be holding up okay. And the outside, well, it's just ugly. Simple as that, ugly. Um, it's gonna take some filing and some sanding and some creative work made with a cutoff wheel. We gotta cut that groove back into it here. Um, but definitely doable. I think this is going to work. So now I think about it, it's every single crack on the steering wheel needs to be handled this way. So I'll let this, I can say, cure a little bit longer maybe, and then we'll start filing on it. All right, we're gonna start with some 60 grit sandpaper here and basically just kind of get the shape of the steering wheel back, I hope. Now the idea is just to knock off all the high spots here, kind of like I'm doing. And 60 grit should cut it pretty quick. And so far it's filing off pretty good. Now you can see this is gonna take some time, but we got a little bit of time. I got no shielding gas for my welder. And I also want to get the steering column put back together because I want to drive this car or at least make it mobile again. So I got the floor shifter mounted up in previous videos. So I got to get the steering column done. So no sense of putting it together, just take it back apart. Anyway, I get the idea here. We're going to take off all the high spots. So we're going to have some lows in the whole thing. As you see the darker gray. Lighter grays where I'm taking the material off. That's where the groove was at. So I kind of anticipated probably two coats on this part. This is the worst crack on the steering wheel. Yeah, anyway, it's gonna take a little bit of time. So I'll keep working on it, but definitely a low spot right through there. So I'll have to come back with a little bit more of that, uh, I can say adhesive stuff or whatever, but uh, we'll keep on working on this. Well, here's that about five minutes of sanding on that. I've actually got the shape roughed in pretty good. Even got the rear channel kind of back into it here. Looped around to the front. It's actually kind of taking shape. Just takes a little time of filing. I guess I'm using like 60 grit sandpaper. So it's really taking a lot of material off. But I went ahead and scuffed up the low area. But you can actually still make out the low channel here. So I'm going to put uh, another coat on here. And let that cure. And see how close we can get it. Okay. I already mixed it all up here. That's self-explanatory. So we'll just say round two. And I made it a little more than I needed, but that's okay. Now the idea I think I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna get it really, really close with this stuff. And I'll probably finish it off with some glazing compound. 
really fill in the fine details. This stuff sands okay, but it's just, I don't know how well it'll feather out though. So we're gonna get this really close. All right. Yeah, I'll let that set up there for a while. It looks pretty good. Got a nice shape to it now. And it's only got a nice radius top of the wheel. So it's going to get super, super, super close. Um, and then once, once that cures, we'll sand that and probably come back a little body filler and then maybe some high build primer. That part may be okay. Okay, here we go. I let that stuff cure. Uh, I've actually got it all sanded nice and contoured really good. I mean, we're really close where it needs to be for shape wise. So that stuff doesn't sand. 100% like I'd hoped it would, but you see little blemishes in that finish there. So we're going to probably put a glaze coat or a, a body filler on top of that. Just really thin coat to fill in the blemishes and the sand marks. And that was the part you guys have seen me do. If you look carefully at the rest of the steering wheel, though, you'll see that all of the cracks and even the ones here on the outside edge, all about the same procedure. You know, grind them out, polish out the groove down to the deep as far as it can go, and then filled it full of that epoxy. And then I've actually worked on sanding it all back to shape but like i said i think the next thing here for us is going to be do some body filler on it now of course that being said keep in mind this steering wheel here if you were paying a body shop or repair facility i have nearly 10 hours ish into this thing you figure most shops rates are around a hundred dollars that's over a thousand dollars just to get this far with the steering wheel and it's not even done i'm going to guess i probably have another five or six hours invest in this thing to get it where it's ready to be painted so keep that in mind. If you're paying someone to, to build one of these steering wheels or rebuild, you may have $2,000 into it. Hmm, that's kind of steep. But if you did it yourself, I've got about 60 bucks of material so far. I suspect all said and done, all in, I may have $200 invested in the steering wheel. But tiny body filler, paint, uh, finish coat, top coat, whatever. I'm going to have a few bucks into this. So is it worth salvaging these old steering wheels? No idea. Don't know. I'm just going to have fun putting this thing back together, see if it can be done. I kind of like the challenge and I hope maybe you learned something. But uh, I'm going to conclude the video as for how to get the things fixed. But I'm going to come back. We're going to finish this journey. Well, I just kind of did this little side project because it got too cold to do much more work. But as you can tell behind here, the Great Pumpkins make a little more progress. And of course, I hope you guys keep joining us for the rebuild of this car in a two car garage. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'd appreciate that. It shows me that I'm doing the right things. And I'd like to see this channel to continue to grow and please share with your friends. So it doesn't happen without you checking this thing out and tell me, hey, John, appreciate what you're doing for us. Now I'm gonna keep plugging away if you guys don't tune in or not, but I'm gonna do the whole car here. I want to get it all posted on YouTube for anyone to reference later on. So appreciate you following me on the journey so far. Plenty more videos yet to come. I hope you guys join us back out here, whatever we decide to do next. I'm not sure which direction we're going to go. Got plenty of projects, but either way, however it goes, I'm going to grab the camera. Hope you guys join us then and whatever it might be. And of course, any questions, let me know just the same. But hope you guys uh, enjoy what you're seeing here so far, and uh, we'll catch you next time.